everyone this is Sandra Spirit of Avalon so I watched a video by um, Meg at Rose Honey Ritual um, which was called many books where she was showing different books that she's either read or got to read or has read a bit of just all the books like around her um, mostly that she'd got to read and I thought gosh, I've got a whole pile of books. Maybe people might like to see um, the many books that I've got to read. Some of them I have read, and I will say that when I show them, um, but most of them I haven't. Um, I think there's about 36 or more <laughs> in the pile um, of books, but and I will list them all below because... Um, my friend Giselle over at Mad Witch channel, um, she said, when you show the books, will you list them all? So I will list them just by title, though. And if you put the titles into Amazon or some other search, I'm sure um, you'll be able to find most of them. So I'm going to start with fiction. So these books I have read. So... Starting with, this is book one, as you can see, um, Father of Lies by S.E. England, and these are fiction books. So I have all three, so you start with Father of Lies, you go on to Tanner's Dell, and then you go on to Magda. And they are, as it says at the top, a darkly disturbing occult horror trilogy. And they are, so if you like horror scary occult type fiction then I can totally recommend these books because these I've had for quite some time and I've read and reread them a few times they're so good um and I've read I think all of her other um novels bar one which I'm going to show you in a minute um so all of these are really cool if you like horror, occult type um, fiction. Really, really good. So there's those. The other one I've got by her that I haven't um, read is Groom Lake. And this is says it's a dark psychological thriller. So just briefly on the back. Lauren Stafford, a traumatised divorcee, decides to rent a cottage on the edge of a beautiful ancestral estate in the Welsh Marches. Um, and then it says something goes wrong and there's something malevolent and ancient, a feeling the whole place is trapped in a time warp. She really ought to leave, but the pull of the lake is too strong. It's dark magic, so powerful it crosses over into dreams, turning them into nightmares. What lies beneath its still black surface? And why can't Lauren drag herself away? So, um, yeah, really cool. So the author is Essie England. It's actually Sarah England. Um, but most of the books come up if you put in s.e.england into search. But, yeah, this one is Groom Lake. So I am looking forward to reading this one. I haven't read it yet, but I'm sure it'll be really good because all of them that I've read so far have been good they're all different but they're all kind of either psychological thriller or they're occult creepy horror type books so that's that one then i've been reading and i've almost finished as you can see i've just got a little tiny bit left to go and this is phil rickman who is a fate um a favorite author of mine and this is two books in one. And I tend to get, as you can see, um, used copies of books. This one was like £3. I mean, you, you know, you can't... What can you get for £3? A coffee, maybe. Possibly not even that. So, um, so this is The Man in the Moss and Crib. Both of them really good. His books tend to have like a pagan element to them 
sort of creepy, supernatural, not like bloody slasher type horror, but creepy, supernatural type horror. Um, and because this is an old copy, the book here that is called Crib is now called Curfew if you do want to find it, because for some reason it was republished under the title of Curfew, which does make total sense with the book, um, the contents of the book, but then so does Crib, so either way. Um, but as this is an old one, so the man in the moss is set, centred around a, a village um, and we have like witchcraft, pagan elements to it. Um, Crib is also a very small village and has creepy, almost black magic type elements to it. Both are really good. If I had to, ha really had to choose, somebody said you have to pick one out of these two that you liked better than the other. Which one did you like the best? It would be Crib or, as I said, now called Curfew if you do want to find it. But I'll put that down below. I'll put crib and I'll put in brackets curfew. So, yeah, really, really cool. It doesn't take, it didn't take me long <laughs> to read this because once I start a book and it's really, really good, I have to just keep going. And Phil Rickman, as I said, is a favourite author of mine. I love his book, Chalice, which is set in Glastonbury. And I've read so many times and I've even got two copies of it. <laughs> So there's that. Another Phil Rickman that I have read is The Bones of Avalon. Another one set in Glastonbury, but it's set at the time of Dr. John Dee, who was um, Queen Elizabeth I's astrologer. Um, so as it says, the Queen's astrologer investigator sent to Glastonbury to unearth the missing bones of King Arthur. So this is really good. So obviously set in the 1500s, 1500s, 1600s, I think, 15, later 1500s. Really good. So this one would be set before the chalice because some of the family names in this, you find them in the chalice. So... You know, the families from like the 1500s have gone right through to sort of, well, the chalice is probably set in the 80s, 90s, maybe. Um, so right through until then, and especially the um, sort of um, the more well-to-do family that have the big house, um, they go right through to the chalice. So, yes, yeah, so if you like want to read them kind of, in order but they are they are standalone novels you don't have to read them one after the other but I just noticed that there were certain surnames and things used in this that are in the chalice and again also if you read the books that are authored by Tom Maidley which is Phil Rickman writing under a different name because they're more kind of teenage fiction Marco's Pendulum and Marco and the Blade of Night again it's set in Glastonbury and you get the same names um, again it's really cool to sort of think oh yeah that person was in that you know so this is the first one and then I discovered actually via Giselle she was the one that told me that there's a second book after the bones of avalon which is called the heresy of dr d so of course <laughs> i had to get it but seriously guys look at this book three pounds or three pounds and a few pence i mean you can't complain at that can you it's even a hardback so this is the book that comes after the bones of avalon is the heresy of dr d don't think it's set in Glastonbury. Um, I don't mind that. But um, I think it's kind of set on the Welsh border. Again, but I thought oh, it'd be really cool to read that as I've read The Bones of Avalon. So haven't read it yet, but it is the follow up to The Bones of Avalon. So it's The Heresy of Dr. D by Phil Rickman. So, 
is that all of the fiction that's all of the fiction so now <laughs> we start getting onto the multitude of non-fiction it's terrible and it's not like i'm not going to read these books i will read them it's just um getting around to it because it actually takes me longer with non-fiction than it does with fiction because with non-fiction I might want to kind of absorb it a bit more or make notes or things like that so this one is what we knew in the night reawakening the heart of witchcraft and it's by Raven Gramassi which a lot of you will um have heard of heard of him and Lon Milo Duquette says, finally, a clear, frank and respectful look at the real roots of witchcraft. So that's Raven, Raven Gramassi. Um, I think he has passed away now. I might be wrong about that, but I think he has. Um, so a comprehensive guide to the arts of witchery. So there's that. So like I said, this is just a look at the books I've got kind of sitting around waiting to be to be read which is what meg kind of did over at rose honey ritual then we have and i thought this you look at this and you'll think oh my god but um this is the demonology of king james the first but this is all about like because you know how he was obsessed with witchcraft and going after people that he thought were witches so this that's why I thought this would be interesting to read. This is by Donald Tyson um, and includes the original text of demonology and news from Scotland. So it says on the back here, um, the key to an essential source text on 17th century witchcraft and the Scottish witch trials. So I think it'll be cool. Let's just read this first bit. Written by King James I and published in 1597, the original edition of Demonology is widely regarded as one of the most interesting and controversial religious writings in history. Yet because it is written in the language of its day, it has been notoriously difficult to understand. Now occult scholar Donald Tyson has modernised and annotated the original text, making this historically important work accessible to contemporary readers. So, yeah, so I think that one will be cool. I mean, a lot of these are brand new books that I've had for a while. So, you know, these have not all been bought at once. This, this is over a couple of years, probably. <laughs> um, so there's that. I've got to keep all these together so that I can write them, all the names of the books down in the comments. Next one, you won't be surprised to see that they're that then, well, there just might be a few Glastonbury books in here. <laughs> okay, so this one is Energy Secrets of Glastonbury Tour by Nicholas R. Mann. So this is, you know, the tour is acknowledged to be one of the most powerful sacred places in the British Isles. Um, read in mystery since before recorded time, myths and legends abound about its role in the spiritual life of the people of these islands and beyond. This book investigates the exact source of that power. So I thought it would be interesting to read. And Nicholas Mann also wrote Isle of Avalon, which I do also have and have read. And, um, and that says this classic study illustrates and describes physical and sacred topography of the isle as well as its symbols, architecture and history. So there's that one. Then I have, and this one I think, yes, I got this one second hand. And this is Glastonbury's Temple of the Stars by Catherine Maltwood. And this is one I was trying to find in Glastonbury but couldn't find. Um, and this is about the Glastonbury Zodiac, where when you look from above the tour, you can see shapes of, or the outlines of different things that correspond to the zodiac like there might be a lion or a bear or things like that as if it's been deliberately put there 
these like etchings into the into the landscape that you can see from above. So does it say here? In recent years, detailed archaeological study has shown that in many parts of the world, prehistoric man had a far deeper understanding of astronomy than traditional historians were willing to accept. So anything like this, I am kind of um, into because I'm interested in all the like um, programs and things on TV and books as well, where they talk about, you know, our timeline being off. And the prehistoric man had more knowledge than we think. And where did they get that knowledge? And it seems like they had tools that you think they couldn't possibly have had. Things like that. So, And then in the landscape is this zodiac. I don't know, I don't think. See, like this part is saying plate 12 Aries. And the dove, you see it's different um, shapes in the landscape that make up the zodiac. And I just think it will be interesting to read. There are other books about this, but I wanted the original um, Catherine Maltwood one. So, yeah, that's that. And that's Glastonbury's Temple of the Stars. Next we have, and I got this in um, Glastonbury, um, second-hand book again. And this is The Flame in the Cauldron, a book of old-style witchery by Orion Foxwood and foreword by Raven Gramassi. And this is an old book, you can see, but one of the most important voices in witchcraft. Um... So yeah, so but I haven't read it. it. Has got bits of writing and stuff in it, which I don't tend to really like in books. But it's okay. Witch blood and the witch knowing. So yeah, I think that'd be interesting. All these books I've got because I thought it's out, it looks interesting. There could be bits and pieces that you can take out of it and use for yourself. So there's that. Then I have um, Gwyn. So this is Ancient God of Glastonbury and Key to the Glastonbury Zodiac. So again, we've got the Glastonbury Zodiac mentioned. And this is written and illustrated by Yuri Leach. Now, I've got other books and at least one other book, two books, I think, other books by Yuri Leach. He's, and they might be in this pile, He's um really good um and he has a Facebook um page called the Owen Grove um that I am in uh well I, I, I follow that page and um his books are really good. Um this one was really good and I want to get he's got another one called I don't know if it's called Gwyn and something about a noon. Um, and it's a much more expanded one that's about 500 pages or something. Um, it's actually on my Amazon wish list and I will eventually get around to getting it. Um, I think, you know, he's like really good. So this is written and illustrated um, by him. Look, it mentions St Nectan's Glen. That is in Cornwall. And changing aisles. Look how good his drawings are though. Guardian of the Zodiac, so Gwyn Apneath, so Lord of the Dead, so and here's a picture of the tall. So oh so good. Oh I love this one. Look at that, look at the eyes. Oh, so good. So yeah, so that's just Gwyn. Ancient God of Glastonbury and Key to the Glastonbury Zodiac. Next we have um, The Willow Path. 
this one I got in Glastonbury. Um, this is Witchcraft, Hermetics and the Hidden Wisdom of the Magical Arts. And this is a Troy Books um, publication. And I do like Troy Books things. I tend to get quite a lot of their books. Not all, but quite a lot. But this one I haven't read. So we've got here, deep in the New England forest, the stone circle lays hidden, nestled in a clearing high atop a mountain of granite, formed in the pattern of the many old stone walls which dot the region. It is here that the willow path emerges from the land itself. In nature there exists an underlying current, a continuity of wisdom and consciousness that manifests in the magical arts. With roots reaching to bask witchcraft, the willow path is a form of the magical arts that incorporates techniques drawn across the rich tapestry of Western occult practices. So, and you've got down here, like the other worlds and realms employed in the art, the stang or witch's staff, sun and moon, the witch's foot and elemental forces, tools of the art. So, yeah, and it's by Troy Books. And this one... Yeah, I did get from Glastonbury. This is the Willow Path, Kerry Wisner. I think this is probably going to be quite a long video, guys. I'll probably have to stop it and restart because it only lets me do like 40 minutes on here. Um, and then just restart it and join the two halves together. So... So this one is The Darker Side of Fairy. It looked quite interesting. Um, this one, I think I got this in Labyrinth Books in Glastonbury. There is a distinct tendency today to assume that fairy kind are friendly and helpful towards us humans. The evidence of over 1,000 years' experience preserved in British folk tradition tells a very different story. British fairies are, like humans, selfish, greedy, violent and cruel. What makes things worse, of course, is the fact that they have magical powers too. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is the darker side of fairy. I thought it sounded interesting. This looks like um, an Arthur Rackham um piece of artwork I might be wrong but it it looks like that to me I wonder if it says probably not no um but yeah so there's that one and here's another Yuri Leach one I've only just got this one actually the Owen Grove by Yuri Leach and this one took a while to come I'm was I'm not sure if I got it from Amazon, but I'm not sure if it was a, like a print-on-demand type thing because I had to wait nearly two weeks for this one. But it's fine. So the Owen Grove is a year wheel in a sacred circle. So this obviously is the different trees of the Owen. Um, and like I say, I haven't had this long. So I've not read it, obviously. But yeah, his books are really good. I've got this one, Glastonbury, <laughs> Ancient Avalon, New Jerusalem, which I haven't read. Um, this one I got, I got this second hand. Yes, this was a used book um, off of eBay, I think. So there's that. Then I have a Doreen Virtue book that I got last time I was in Glastonbury with my brother, which was Charge of the Goddess, um, which can be difficult to find this one. Um, so I haven't read that yet. It's not a very thick book. Uh, another one that I've had for a while but I haven't read is an ABC of Witchcraft, Past and Present by Doreen Valiente. I've read um, her other books that I have on the shelf and um, do reread them but this one I haven't I haven't read yet then I have some Dion Fortune books so I have Applied Magic by Dion Fortune I have Aspects of Occultism by Dion Fortune 
So these two I got in Glastonbury and I have the Magical Battle of Britain which I got for my birthday which I haven't read yet but I am going to. Well all of these I will. It's just um, choosing which ones I'm going to read first. I have a book by Michael Howard which is West Country Witches. That's the back. And I have here two books that go together where you would read one after the other. Oh, I've got another Dion Fortune one here. Hang on. So this is the story of Dion Fortune, which I had to get used. It's a little bit difficult to get. Not hugely difficult, but you have to have a look, look around for this one. So that's a fairly recent one that I've, that I've had come um, used but it's in good condition. And these are the two that kind of go together. And these ones are a little bit more expensive. And my mum bought them for me for Christmas. So the first one is Avalon Within, A Sacred Journey of Myth, Mystery and Inner Wisdom by Jenna Telindru. I could be saying that totally wrong. These are on my list to read next, actually. Avalon Within is the first one. Oh, that's the back. And the one following that is the Mythic Moons of Avalon. Lunar and Herbal Wisdom from the Isle of Healing. So these two I'm going to be reading next. Um, like I said, I got them for Christmas. Um, but um, they are a little bit more expensive, I will tell you that, guys. They are... Um, the cheapest place that I'd seen them was on Amazon but they were literally for this one in Glastonbury it was £30 for one in Glastonbury but these two um, I think they were around £18 each maybe a little bit more so yeah a little bit more on the pricey side those then I have a really old book going back to 1992, but I really like um, reading Andrew Collins um, things. If any of you like sort of horror and psychic things and people working with psychics as a true story, um, The Black Alchemist by Andrew Collins is so good. So good. I've read it a couple of times. So it's The Black Alchemist by Andrew Collins. I've only got that on Kindle, so I can't show you it. And then there's a follow-up book to that called The Second Coming, which is quite hard to get. But this is The Circle Makers. So this is a revolutionary new vision of the crop circle enigma. So I quite like reading about things like that. Even if this is a book from 1992, I don't mind um, so yes, I've got that. I have Rediscovering the Celtic Moon Goddess, Queen of the Night, this book is called. That's the back. Discover the role and power of the moon in Celtic religion, folklore, mythology and learn how to harness that power for your daily life. Next one, The New Age in Glastonbury. You guys are going to be like, oh my God, how many Glastonbury books can you have? Just all of them. <laughs> the Construction of Religious Movements. So that's the back and this is a hard back and I think I might have got it on eBay. This one. So yes, that's The New Age in Glastonbury. Then I have this book, which I wanted for ages, and this is an old book, and I think this, I'm not sure if this is a, yes, this is a first, a first edition one, 1993, called The Avalonians by Patrick Benham. 
This is the intriguing account of the life and times of a most unusual group of people. These extraordinary characters were drawn to Glastonbury, also known as the Isle of Avalon, at the turn of this century and became involved in a series of strange events. Oh, so good. I love it. Avalonians, and you can still get these, um, but as I said, um, it will probably be used copy. Now these next ones, so I've read this one which is Under the Witching Tree by Corinne Boyer and is a Troy Books and it's the first of a trilogy. As you can see, Under the Witching Tree is the first in a trilogy of books by Corinne Boyer, a folk herbalist known for her work exploring the traditional medicinal and magical applications of plants and trees as well as their folklore. So I've read that one and it's really, uh, really good. Um, like you get the Black Earth Medicines of Autumn, an Altar of Winter Charms, Springtime Forest Rite and all the different like... Um, trees associated and then you get this whole thing of specific recipes and charms that you can use as well or try out so um yeah so that's the first in the series which i have read and is really good the next one that i haven't read is under the bramble arch corinne boyer again it's the second offering in a trilogy of books by corinne boyer following on from under the witching tree so that is that one then i have and i'm not sure if this is the third one in the series or whether this is just a um one-off standalone but this one was really difficult to get the witch's cabinet plant law sorcery and folk tradition by corinne boyer was so hard to get and guys this is a first edition hardback it's out of print the paperback is out of print as well this cost me a little bit of money i almost didn't get it because it did cost me a little bit of money i had the money so it was it was fine it wasn't like i was getting myself into debt or anything um but it did cost me a little bit of money this one um but, and i haven't read it yet but i'll definitely be hanging on to it because it's you know first edition hardback and was not cheap and this was from courtyard books look at the back of that so cool another one of hers is plants of the devil so this is about um like poisonous plants like belladonna hembane monkshood that type of thing so i thought it'd be interesting i love the cover too so it's plants of the devil then we have the horned god of the witches by jason mankey which i still have to read <laughs> so many books I have The Wisdom of Birch, Oak and Uke. Uke. Birch, Oak and You. <laughs> Connection to the Magic of Trees for Guidance and Transformation. And these are all trees sacred to the Druids. Leaves from a Druid's Journal. This is by Penny Billington. So there's that one. And I have another Yuri Leach one which is the Pagan Temple of Glastonbury Tor. This one is high on my list to read along with the Avalon Within books. So the Yuri Leach ones are high on my list for reading of his that I haven't read. Um, I've got a Kathy Jones book, which I got from the Goddess Temple shop which I've had quite a while, this one, and I haven't read. I've read her other great big thick ones, but I haven't read In the Mysterium of the Lady of Avalon, Exploring the Secret Hidden Lands. Look at this picture, so lovely. It's like 
the tool as, as a female figure. This is the back. So, yeah, that needs, needs to be read as well. Have the spirit of the Celtic gods and goddesses, their history, magical power and healing energies. That one looks really interesting. It's $13.99, haven't even taken the sticker off. The history of the Celtic gods and goddesses brought to life with visualisations, rituals and exercises to incorporate into any spiritual practice. So interesting, I think. And then we have Celtic tree rituals by Charlene Hidalgo, who did also do an oracle deck. This is ceremonies for the 13 moon months and the day. So that one looks interesting too. All of these do. And then the last one that arrived yesterday, I actually saw on Meg's channel when she was um, showing her books, um, was this one, The Mystical Nature Diary of Opal Whiteley, which is called The Singing Creek Where the Willows Grow. And it sounded really interesting when she mentioned it and I thought, I wonder if I can get a copy. And I managed to get this um, obviously used as you can see copy for three pounds again so yeah it looks really good so it's her diary like a nature mystical nature diary um, and you know she was born in in the states so this is not a a British person this is um, Peter, uh, Oregon, Oregon Wilderness, so she's from Oregon, so, but it just sounded really interesting, so that's my latest one that's arrived, so that's all of them guys, all of the books, <laughs> I mean not every book that I've got obviously, but um, these are the ones that are waiting to be read, um, so yeah, so I hope it was um interesting for you um and there might have been some here that perhaps you know you might like to get for yourself and i will list all the titles in the description down below so yeah so i hope you enjoyed this and i hope everyone has a lovely weekend and i'll talk to you all soon bye for now